Hey guys, and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board or card game review for the game SpongeBob SquarePants Flux, the card game. And in the game Flux SpongeBob SquarePants, it's very similar to all the other Flux style games. You're going to be basically drawing cards and playing cards, trying to put keepers out, as well as obtaining the goals needed. If you need SpongeBob and Gary, and you get those keepers and put them out, and that goal is on the field, you are going to win the game. It's a quick spread game for two to five players. It takes about half an hour to play this for ages eight and up. And you're going to be taking actions and dropping cards down. This is a series of games that has been going on for a long time. I have different types of Flux here already and I've played it in the past, even before doing a YouTube channel. Something that I constantly see more and more of, kind of like Munchkin. I'm always appreciative of just seeing more. Let's talk about this one here, SpongeBob SquarePants. I'll tell you down below, I'll show you what comes in the game, how it's played if you've never actually played Flux before, and if not, shame on you. And then we'll also come up and I'll give you my review for the game and a link down below where you can pick it up if you're interested from Looney Labs and Spin Master Games. Three weeks later. Hello, residents of Bikini Bottom, and welcome to SpongeBob SquarePants, the card game, the game of flux with SpongeBob. And here's all the components you're going to be getting. There is, of course, this little Looney Labs thing that tells you all the different games that they have, if you're interested in picking up any more, the rulebook for the game, and a big stack of cards here. And obviously, there is going to be a setup for it. One is placing the basic rules out here on the table, which is going to have a flux back that's different than the rest of them. You can have a first player marker that actually is part of the game as well, and a big stack of cards full of keepers, actions, rule changes, and so on and so forth. In this specific one here, it's not only going to give you this little coin, but also you're going to get these eight or seven different cards that you can add to the game as well as exclusive extra cards. To begin the game, shuffle this deck here and deal out three cards to each player. And then begin the game. And if you've never played Flux before, it's pretty simple. You do exactly what the rules say. Deal three cards out, choose a player to start first, then go ahead and have them draw a card and play a card. And in the game, there are certain different types of cards. You can have rule cards here, which can be added to these rules here, or they can take the place of them, depending on what they say. Uh, you're going to have cards like these, which are basically keepers. They're going to stay in front of you for the entire game until they're removed in some way, and they will hopefully have you win the game if a goal requires them to be met. You're also going to have goal cards here. Goal cards are what you're going to put out in the field. There's only going to be one of them, but they'll get replaced when new people put them out, and they'll ask you for certain things like Mr. Krabs and Spongebob and if you happen to have both of them you'll win the game and then of course you're going to have the wonderful action cards. Action cards are cards that you can utilize throughout the game that are going to give you unique abilities and whatnot like for instance draw three play two of them you can play that card and it kind of gives you a little boost in gameplay. And so on your turn like I said before you're going to draw a card and then you're going to play a card and in this case maybe I'll just play a spatula right in front of us and then you'll pass turn. Next player is going to go ahead and draw a card and and then play a card and maybe they'll play that goal for the biggest fans and requires mermaid man and barnacle boy or plus either spongebob or patrick then once again draw a card and then go ahead and play a card and maybe i'll go ahead and put out that larry the lobster pass draw a card and play a card like i said before if i ever want to play a new goal i'd have to replace the old one put it into this card pile or if i want to play an action card it might let me do something like search the deck for barnacle boy and mermaid man or steal them from an opponent and then, of course, there's also being able to change the rules. And in this case here, I think I'm just going to go ahead and play this goal card, switching this one out. And then the game will just continue. And it just keeps going on like that. People are going to be drawing one and playing one up until the rules of the game change. Like I said before, there's a draw one, play one. Bam, when you play that new rule, it changes it, and you put it over here replacing the previous rule. So now you're going to play two as opposed to uh, playing one. And then, of course, things like hand limit, you'll put it next to the rules because it's not attached. And if anything ever says hand limit, you'll actually replace that one. And so you're going to constantly get new rules, and you're also going to get uh, cards that replace older rules. So now you can draw three, play two, but you have a hand limit of two in your hand. And the game just continues up until the point where somebody hits that goal. Somebody reaches this specific goal, has the keepers in front of them. That are the matching requirements for that goal and if you have that you win the game it's rather simple pretty straightforward comes with all the different characters that you'd find in bikini bottom all the different shenanigans that you'd expect to see with mr krabs and patrick you're gonna find squidward you're gonna find sandy and of course actions that kind of feel like part of being a member of the bikini bottom scene all right let's come up and discuss the game we'll talk about it a little bit and you guys can decide for yourself if you want to pick the game up link in the description
many months later. So let's discuss SpongeBob SquarePants, the card game, the Flux Edition, and what I think about the game. Well, the first thing is this game is obviously attached to SpongeBob. And as a kid, I grew up watching it. I've always really, really enjoyed SpongeBob. And as a beginning gamer, Flux was one that constantly hit the table. We were playing Flux as much as we played Resistance and Munchkin. It's a game that I constantly drop down for newer gamers, and even still now when new people come to play games, and there are people that are just like new to Uno and all that kind of stuff, it's something I'll bring out as well to show them a little bit of a different style of game that involves changing the rules of gameplay, making things happen randomly, and instead of just something that's kind of like blase where you're just like, oh, you lose a bunch of turns and whatnot, like Uno style things that I'm not personally a big fan of, this one here allows for different gameplay to take over the course of the game, so every game feels different because of the different rules involved. Flux also has a bunch of different IPs attached to it, whether it be like, I don't know, Flux in Space or uh, Flux Marvel Edition. They have a whole bunch of things, which you can actually look in here. It'll tell you all the different Fluxes they've got going on. All of the games feel similar. Okay, you got Marvel Flux, you got Jumanji Flux, and then there's a whole heap load of different games right here. They're all Flux. And if you've played one, you've played them all. You kind of have an idea of how they're all played. They have different cards and different actions. They function differently. You've got the keepers and the goals. They're going to be different combinations, of course, based on the critters that you're playing within the game. And for me, this has always been a great game, great gateway game to play with new players. I've always got it out for kids. I always bring it out for family gatherings. And I bring it out for small parties involving like New Year's and that kind of stuff. People are really amped to play the game. It's really simple for them to understand and they can get into the fun of it. It's not too extremely aggressive on one side or another. You're able to kind of play cards and everybody feels like they're doing something throughout the entire game and of course the winning is just sometimes random sometimes a bit of luck and sometimes you have that strategy that you've planned for that you're able to manipulate the cards and the goals and how you place them out based on the rules and that can satisfy the more strategic gamer and but of course everybody has a chance to win in this game regardless of how you play because things just might work out to their advantage based on how everybody else chose to play Overall, I've always really liked Flux. Now, of course, there are going to be people who are probably not as interested in the game as any more. I'd say most people who played Flux of it had enjoyed it and probably played a whole bunch of it. But just because of that, in my opinion, that shows to the strength of the game Flux as to how many times they've been played. I've played this game a ton of times to where some people are just like, okay, no more Flux, no more Flux. And I think that can be said for a lot of games, especially even like the game The Mind, another game I really, really enjoyed. Something that you've played a bunch of Munchkin. Those are games that are like constantly hit the table. But that makes this game a great gift. It's one of those things where I always think back about the experiences that I used to have when I first started playing just the games like this and I always try and gift these ones out because that's really the I, that's the way to get people into gaming, modern gaming, is a lot of these style games and the fact that they have a ton of variety of the different IPs, the different TV shows and all that good stuff that can make people want to collect and to play these games. Overall, I really like Flux. If you don't mind luck and you don't mind chance, a lot of random card throwing that can happen, spontaneous actions and the fact that uh, this game can be a little brutal on the occasion if you're uh, looking to uh, be a little <laughs> little bit like that but I think you're going to enjoy Flux. If you've never seen this game before or heard of this game this is definitely one I would suggest playing. Definitely one I'd have at least one of the a bajillion different different games here on this on this little list and there stands to reason as to why there's so many because it's been so popular for such a long period of time. Link in the description for Spongebob Squarepants Flux the card game down below, go ahead and pick it up if you're interested. Outro time. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game or card game review. If you're interested in picking up the game, like I said before, link in the description. Also, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification button. It's another way for us to keep making content and show you all the new and interesting games we get here that you can take a look at for your friends, your family, or for even yourself. Solo games, of course. As well as the website, unfilteredgamer.com. Two giveaways going on right now that you can pick up. One is for the game Mud, the Kickstarter that's going on. Another is for Dungeon Drop, Drop Too Deep. Also, our live streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. If you want to go ahead and watch us play games just like this one on the stream, go ahead and head there as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to living in a pineapple under the seas.